Hello, everybody. Welcome or welcome back to The Way Podcast. I am your host, Chloe Gorgas. I am so excited to be making this podcast episode today. I'm so excited that you are here because I believe God is an intentional God and he has you here for a reason. Um, so today I'm pre-recording this on a beautiful Sunday. It's so pretty outside. Um, but you want to know it's prettier than outside? You. Okay. Okay. I'm sorry. Um, but anyways, so like, okay, I just want to start off by saying God has such a purpose for you today. Like God doesn't create anything worthless. So he woke you up today for a reason. And that's something to rejoice over. And that's something to be happy over. Makes me so happy to think about. I also have my iced coffee here. Like, praise the Lord. Honestly, I don't know what I'd do without coffee. Obviously, I don't know what I'd do without Jesus because Jesus is my number one Jesus. Jesus is my Jesus. But, like, thank God he created coffee because I gotta wake up at 4 a.m. in the morning for school. I'm like, I don't know how I'd do that without iced coffee. Obviously, Jesus is the one that gives me strength. But, like, thank you, God, for coffee. Um, <laughs> anyways, so today I am going to be reading from Job 4. I think it said Job. Yeah, that's what my mom said, I think. Um, but Job chapter 4 in the Bible. And if you're new here and you're not a Christian or you're just like kind of returning and not really sure about the whole Christian thing, um, I just want to say I 100% welcome you here. I have no judgment nor hate towards anybody because that's not the character of Jesus. And my main goal is just to show you all the character of Jesus. So. Hopefully that's what you get from this, but uh, I really encourage you to listen because even if you're not a Christian, you don't follow Jesus, this could be really encouraging for you and maybe show you more about who Jesus really is. Um, Anyways, so I'm so excited for this podcast today. So I think what I'm going to start by doing is I've been reading the book of Job. I think I'm on like Job 10 right now, but I'm going to read Job chapter 4 because I read it like two days ago and really something in it just kind of spoke to me. Um, and I'm just going to kind of read the whole entire thing. So if you want to open up to that in your Bible, if you have your Bible with you, then open up to Job, J-O-B chapter four. Um, and if you don't have your Bible, that's fine. You can just listen to me talk. Uh, but yeah, I'll give you guys like a second to give your, get your Bibles out if you're reading it from your Bible, but I have my iced coffee. Um, sometimes I give my iced coffee like a name on this podcast. So what should we name it? I'm going to name it. No, I already did Fred once. I think, okay, what am I naming this? I'm going to name it Julia. Okay, this is Julie, Julia the Ice Coffee. And if your name is Julia, I love that name, by the way. Such a pretty name. Okay, anyways. So, hopefully we're by uh, Job chapter four by now. So, I'm just going to read it. Then Eliphaz and Temanite replied to Job. Will you be patient and let me say a word for who could keep from speaking out? In the past, you have encouraged many people. You have strengthened those who were weak. Your words have supported those who were falling, and you encourage those with shaky knees. But now when trouble strikes, you lose heart. You are terrified when it touches you. Doesn't your reverence for God give you confidence? Doesn't your life of integrity give you hope? Stop and think. Do the innocent die? When have the upright been destroyed? My experience shows that those who plant trouble and cultivate evil will harvest the same. A breath from God destroys them. They vanish into a blast of his anger. The lion roars and the wildcats snarl, but the teeth of the strong lions will be broken. The fierce lion will starve for lack of prey, and the cubs of the lioness will be scattered. This truth was given to me in secret. As though whispered in my ear, it came to me in a disturbing vision at night. When people are in deep sleep, fear gripped me and my bones trembled. A spirit swept past my face, and my hair stood on end. The spirit stopped, but I couldn't see its shape. There was a form behind my, or before my eyes. In the silence, I heard a voice say, Can a mortal be innocent before God? Can anyone be pure before the Creator? If God does not trust his own angels and has charged his messengers with foolishness, how much less will he trust his people made of clay? They are made of dust, crushed as easily as a moth. They are alive in the morning, but dead by evening, gone forever without a trace. Their tent cords are pulled, and the tent collapses, and they die in ignorance. Okay, so that was a lot, and you're probably, if you're just listening, you're probably like, whoa, 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 what's happening here? And if you don't know the context uh, context of the story of Job, 
basically what happens in the earlier chapters of this book is Job is a man who has a lot of things. Job rejoices in God. He's a man of God. He is has a good loving family. He has pets. He has just, he has all of that. And basically what Satan does is Satan comes up to God and he's like, okay, well, clearly Job is just happy because he has all this stuff. He doesn't just truly trust in you and he's truly not rejoicing in you. He's just happy because he has all this stuff. So let me curse Job. Let me, let me take away all the stuff from Job. And then God is like, okay, Satan, do that. But I know that Job is my servant and Job is still going to be happy because I, because I give him true joy and because I give him true peace. So basically the Lord trust, the Lord allowed that to happen, not because he wanted to hurt Job, not because he wanted Job to suffer, but because he knew that God was all Job needed to be happy and have true joy. So basically what happens is Satan does that. He takes away everything from Job, his animals, his family, his everything. But the cool thing about isn't even if we all lost everything, if we had Jesus, we would really have everything we need. That's something that just kind of sticks out to me in this book. Um, but anyways, so yeah, um, basically Satan does that. And Job at first, he's like, you know what? This just happened to me, but I'm just going to keep praising the Lord. This happened to me, but I'm not going to stop praising God because God is still good despite the fact that what's happening to me isn't good, but I know that God's going to work it for my good. So Job started off like that, but then Job does start to complain a little bit. And okay, like, oh, wait, no. Job starts to complain after he start, he got this like really bad sickness and disease and like scabs are all over his body. And okay, if we, let's just think about this for a second. If we were all in this situation, I know we all want to sit here and say that we would be rejoicing, like, praise the Lord, I have scabs all over my body, but Jesus is good. But if I'm going to sit here and be honest with you guys, I probably would not be me at first. I would probably be mad and I'd probably complain if I'm going to be honest. Is that what I should do? Probably not. But we all have a flesh. And obviously when you're in that moment at the time of Job started complaining. Um, but something that I noticed about Job and I haven't finished this book yet is that literally like even if he is complaining, he still has like about what's happening to him. He still has um, such a deeply rooted faith in Jesus. Like, he still believes Jesus is the Almighty. Um, and obviously, a lot of the times, we're not just going to lose everything, but you might. You might. I don't know. I don't know what God's plan for you. Well, like, not that that's God's plan, but you know what I mean. Um, but basically, like, I think that it's just so inspiring that, like, he still just rejoiced in Jesus. Obviously, there was a lot of complaining in, like, some of the chapters, but, you know, he still had like a deeply rooted faith in Jesus and I haven't finished the book yet I've heard of things like what happens in this book but um yeah I just love that he stays um I actually will spoil it for you guys because I like kind of know how this book ends even though I haven't finished it because I've heard it from like people and I, you know I've heard the story of Job before but like I'm doing a deep study into the book right now um basically what happens is I don't know the exact details but Job like keeps trusting in God despite all the bad things that are happening to him and all that's being taken away from him but he still rejoices because he has everything he needs needs because he has God and God gives him with more than he had before like wow okay okay um God gives Job more than he had before when he was able to go through the trials and go through the testing of his faith um and when he was able to endure the spiritual warfare, God gave him more than what he lost. Um, but anyways, I'm pretty sure that's what happens. But anyways, yeah. So I just read Job chapter four and something. So basically this is called Eliphaz, Eliphaz, is, I'm sorry, I guess I do not know how to say this name, but it is Eliphaz first response to Job, 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 and Eliphaz is Job's best friend, one of Job's friends, and what really sticks out to me in this chapter, and like kind of what I wanted to make this podcast on, is being the friend that encourages, is being the friend that spreads the light of Jesus, um, and I love chap, I love verses three through five, it says, in the past you have encouraged many people, you have strengthened those who are weak, your words have supported those who are falling, you encourage those with shaking knees, but now when trouble strikes, you lose heart. You are terrified when it touches you. So many of us are really great encouragers to our friends. 
but if something ever happens to us that's bad or if something or if somebody ever says something to us or if we're ever having like a really bad like time or something we completely lose that you know we can encourage our friends but we can't encourage ourselves in the lord and so many of us lose sight from the fact that like what we're preaching to our friends when they're going through a hard time is what we should always be preaching to ourselves but what really stood out to me here about Eliphaz, I'm just going to say his name like that. I'm sorry if I'm wrong. But what really stood out to me about him was that he was encouraging Job and he didn't give up. In chapter 5, his response continues. Um, in chapter 5, one of the verses is verses 17 through 18. But consider the joy of those corrected by God. Do not despise the discipline of the Almighty when you sin. For though he strikes, he... For though he wounds, he also bandages. He strikes, but his hands also heal. So anyways, what I just like wanted to point out is today we're going to be kind of like discussing and going over just being the friend that encourages. Job lost everything, but he had friends. And well, of course, Jesus was his everything, but he had friends who, to encourage him in the truth and to encourage him in the truth of God. And I'm also going to take an iced coffee sip right now. So hold on, guys. Um... But I want to talk about that. So, have you ever had a friend who just comes up to you and starts crying? Just a question. And so many of us, it's happened to me. And so many of the times I've just sat there and I'm like, okay, I really don't know how to react. Like, I want to be that comforting friend. Like, oh, come here. And that's what I do. I give them a hug and stuff. But I'm like, I want to actually help them right now. Like, I don't know what to do. And then that dawned on me. I'm like, okay how is this not occurring to me that I should be encouraging them in the word right now? And I'm not saying if your friend comes up to you and they're like, my dad just died. You're like, oh, well, I rebuke that in the name of Jesus. Cheer up. Like, no, that's not what I'm saying. I, um, no, no, that's not what I'm saying. I'm saying you should definitely be there for your friends if they're going through a hard time. I'm not saying go and start preaching at them. I'm saying that you should be a gentle spirit you should be a kind spirit that really breathes the life of god to them obviously that's not what you're going to do in the exact moment when they're sad about a loss of somebody you're going to give them a hug you're going to tell them hey i am here for you i am here to talk i love you so much i'm always here to just like you know speak life and you can pray over them that's what you can do you can say lord i pray over this person right now that i love so much give them your peace lord i can't do anything i can't say anything in my own strength that's gonna help but i know you you can do that um and i was also at church this morning and our sermon was all about love and the pastor said something it was like if you truly want to love people don't show them the love that you can bring out of yourself show them the love of jesus because that's true love if you're really looking on like how to be a kind person and how to love others, don't do that through your own power. Do that through the power of Jesus. Say, Jesus, give me your kindness. Jesus, help me be kind like you. Jesus, help me love like you. So if you're ever that friend who's like, you know, you seem to be the encourager, like the, that we're all called to be the encouraging friend. That's why Jesus blesses us with friends so that when we're going through a hard time, or this can be for a family member too, like family members, friends, whenever they're going through a hard time, that's when God calls us to really just be like, okay, I'm not just going to sit here and I'm not just going to let you, I'm not going to let the enemy start lying to you. Obviously, they should be able to do that for themselves too, but like sometimes that's why God calls us to be a friend and being a friend in Christ. It's like we should, we should pray over them. Be an encouraging light. Um, so hopefully that made sense. Um, but I also read a verse, it's Proverbs 16, 24, I'm pretty sure. Um, and it's like, Actually, let me just read it because um, it's so, so, so good. Proverbs 16. Oh, goodness. Um, Donde esta? Okay, wait. Actually, I know it. It's Proverbs 16, 24. Kind words are s like honey, sweet for the wait, sweet to the soul and healthy for the body. Okay, it's something like that. Um, that's basically what it is, but if you want to know exactly what it is, look that up. It's Proverbs 16, 24. But anyways, um, kind words are so important, and going in, and like, being in high school, something I see, it's just, 
people have such a hard time just being a good human being people have such a hard time just being a nice person and it's actually so sad to see because some of the girls i'll see that call themselves christians and they have the bible verse in their bio or the ones doing the bullying and i'm like this is not representing christ this is not what christ would be doing right now and it just really makes me sad to see because it really gives followers of christ a bad rep when we see people not actually reflecting the character of jesus because you can have the bible verse in your bio and you can post a bible verse on your story every single day you could even make tiktoks preaching if you wanted to but if you're not actually showing the character of jesus to people you meet and your friends literally what does that bible verse do because the bible verse is supposed to be truth and when you're not living in truth it's like okay well this doesn't really do anything um ice coffee break hold on but it says something somewhere in that verse proverbs 16 24 it says that kind words are literally honey for the body imagine that you know how sweet honey is and it says it's also healthy for the body kind words are so powerful and so are mean words okay when you literally say you see a girl and you're like you whisper over to your friend oh my gosh she's trying to be like she's so ugly like oh my gosh you you start making fun of her that is literally not only of course being extremely disrespectful and rude to her that is literally being rude to your own body because basically what you're doing when you start talking about somebody else like that that you see is you are basically degrading your you're degrading your soul you're making yourself your body and your spirit unhealthy because like that okay this is the best way i can explain it like so say you do that you're like oh she's so ugly how does that really make you feel inside like like be completely honest with yourself do you feel any better about yourself by saying that no no you don't but say you go up and you like see this girl and you think oh my gosh she's beautiful i'm gonna go tell her like genuinely like oh my gosh hi you're so beautiful and you're not going up behind her back and whispering to your friend but you just meant that out of your spirit doesn't that build you up inside doesn't that make you feel so awesome when you can celebrate somebody else like doesn't that make you feel such a light not your own light but the light of jesus doesn't shining the light of jesus and speaking the words of jesus and speaking kindness like jesus would speak kindness doesn't that make your soul feel so your spirit feel so much healthier because words of death the reason why they hurt our spirit so much is because words of death don't come from jesus so every time we speak a word of death which could be like something mean to somebody else or mean to ourselves, even or just a coming in agreement with the enemy's lies to us um when we are coming into agreement with words of death what that does to our soul is it tells our soul okay um so technically the truth is that jesus is words of life are better and jesus is the be like jesus is the truth but i came into agreement with these words the words that are gonna like degrade and basically what that does is that says like okay well maybe jesus isn't the truth okay i, I don't you y'all get what i'm trying to get at you know what i mean um but what i'm saying is that there is such a difference between words of life and words of death both are very powerful build words say words of life because it's not only healthy for you but it's healthy for people around you it's healthy just for everything and it's so much easier to be kind than to be mean which is what i found um and yeah so anyways another iced coffee break but like i said at the beginning like i really just kind of want to touch on just being that friend that's really there to encourage um something me and my parents were talking about yesterday is like it's such a common thing to complain it's such a common thing to just wake up and be stuck in this rut like oh i have to go to school today i have to go to work today i have to interact with these people i have to do this i have to do that i have to get on the like rigidy bus i have to you know what whatever we're complaining about oh i have to go to this i have to do that i have to blah 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 blah, blah, blah. you get to do that you know i'm sorry it's sounding like a tech talk and it's gonna it's probably gonna sound like one of those inspirational videos you'll see on instagram but i don't care you get to do that you get to be alive right now you get to wake up like i think that some people don't i'm not saying you're never gonna make a mistake of complaining in your whole life and you're gonna be perfect but as children of light of children of jesus especially we should not be stuck in that I find it so personally draining to be around people who complain every 2.5 seconds. Like, do you ever have anything positive to say? Obviously, in life, we're not going to have 
not everything is going to be perfect and we're not going to want to do everything that we do. But don't you understand it's such a gift to be alive? Don't you understand there are people literally sitting in a hospital bed sick, wishing they had the opportunity to go to school, just wishing they could see their friends again, just wishing they could go to school, just wishing they could learn something maybe. I don't know, but it's such a gift to be alive like genuinely i'm not saying you have to wake up in the morning and like yes 4 a.m let's go let's do math like i'm not saying you have to be like that but i'm saying that you can look at the things that are good because there's a lot more things that are probably good about your life than bad but so often the enemy wants to use us by focusing on the bad rather than the good you can say hey oh my gosh i'm gonna wake up this morning and i'm gonna tell somebody about jesus obviously my joy about going to school isn't going to learn what it isn't okay like maybe learning isn't really my favorite thing ever sitting in class is not my favorite thing ever but instead of focusing on the fact that i don't want to go to class i'm gonna focus on the fact that i am literally gonna go and i'm gonna go tell the person i'm sitting next to about jesus i'm gonna go tell the person i'm sitting next to i'm gonna share them the love of jesus i'm gonna talk to jesus about them like make jesus your main focus and everything you do and so much joy is going to start to exude out of your life when you make jesus the priority jesus the focus he it just it it results in so much joy because when you're planting joy in the words you say inside of your soul and your spirit you're going to start to just like grow and plant and bloom into joy and that's just what's going to happen when you're planting jesus into you you'll start to bloom into a whole joy because you're planting the seeds of jesus jesus is joy and that's it's going to start to bloom out of you um anyways but yeah i want to talk about that like do not, if you are a child of the light, do not be a child who speaks of darkness, okay? When we are Christians, we're, it's being a Christian is more than just saying, hey, I love Jesus, great, maybe I'll put a Bible verse in my bio, that'll be kind of aesthetic, kind of cute, you know? Maybe I'll post, like, a little Bible verse on my story once a week, uh, but, you know, like, I'm just gonna, like, kind of go out my life, like, my life is really sucky, my life is really boring. No! Jesus and your life aren't two separate things. We're supposed to be bringing the joy of Jesus into our everyday life. There's so much power in the words we speak. And when we're speaking things like, oh, I hate this homework. Oh, I hate this. I hate that. I hate that. That is literally filling us up with so much words of death. That is filling. That is basically what the enemy wants to do. And I might seem a little extreme right now. Like, gosh, she's getting so dramatic over this. Like, it's not that deep if I complain. Yeah, it's not that deep until you start to get depressed from it. It's not that deep until all you're doing is complaining. Being around somebody who is complaining 24-7, that is not a friend I want to have. I'm sorry, it's just not. I'm not saying you're never going to complain about something. I'm not saying you're never going to make the mistake. I'm saying 24-7, when all you can seem to do is complain, like, oh, it's too hot out out here, oh my gosh. It can be the littlest things. Like, at least you're alive, okay? And I'm not trying to be like Little Miss Perfect right now. I make my mistakes literally every single day of my life. So I hope that's not what you guys are getting out of this. Like, oh, she thinks she's so perfect at this. Like, no, I don't. Trust me. I, I literally made the mistake two days ago. Uh, actually, probably like yesterday. I Probably today. Okay. Um, but I'm working at it every day. And I'm not saying something about being a Christian and a Christ follower. Is it's not something where like automatically, boom, you're perfect. It's something, it's more about heart posture. It's like waking up every single day and having the heart posture. Like, I'm not going to complain. I'm going to focus on Jesus and make Jesus the aspect of every part of my life today. And that is what's going to get me through my day. Not because maybe I want to go to school and learn about math, but yes, I'm going to go to school and I'm going to use where God has put in me because I know he's put me in every single place in my life for a reason. And exact, I'm supposed to be in this math class. Maybe not to learn math, but to tell somebody about Jesus. I'm supposed to be in this English class because there might be a person I'm sitting next to that just needs a little bit of light in their stormy life okay like God doesn't make a mistake in your everyday life find joy in the fact that Jesus has you exactly where he wants you to if you really can't find joy in anything else find joy in Jesus because there's a lot of joy in that there's been mornings where I obviously don't want to wake up and go to school and I don't want to go learn but you know what I woke up joyful that morning not because I was excited about school but because I was excited to go and spread the love of Jesus to my friends okay sometimes I don't want to learn about 2x plus 55 okay but I do want to tell people about Jesus like okay what I'm trying to get at is just make Jesus the pointer make Jesus the focus of everything that you are doing and so much joy gets rooted out of that sorry guys I had an iced coffee break 
but there's just something i'm just gonna like say like there's something just so attractive about a person who do, like spreads the love of jesus there's something so attractive about people who just spread light and like talk words of life like i would rather be any single day of my life i would rather be around somebody who's speaking life rather than speaking death speaking life is just so 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 important and the reason why it's actually so attractive to me is because jesus is attractive jesus i just want to be like drawn into jesus and when i see people speaking like happy words it's like wow they're really like jesus like sometimes i like you know like you can like tell when somebody is a follower of christ and not a follower of christ and the little things you do those little things really do matter like the words you speak to other people and about other people and about yourself even like if you're sitting around and you're like oh dang i'm so ugly that if you're saying that about yourself around some other person you should not be even just saying that like to yourself in general but if you if your friend hears you say that but like Ooh, she's like that christian girl i thought she was following jesus like i thought she thought jesus made her beautiful if you're saying those things about yourself that you don't know what that does to somebody around you like it's really important to just like be aware of every word you're speaking because it's either really bringing somebody to jesus or it's not it's either really like showing people the love of christ or it's not so i guess like maybe my point of this podcast or what i wanted to really get at is just spread love instead of hate okay that sounds so so corny but that's not my point spread the love of jesus rather than the devil because complaints are from the devil all that is from the devil i'm not saying you are the devil i'm not saying you're a demon if you've ever complained in your life that's not what i'm saying i'm saying that when we're constantly saturated in complaining that is what the devil wants to see you doing okay but jesus says I have woken you up today because I have a purpose for you and I want you to find joy in that. That is from Jesus. There's always something to be thankful for. And if you're like, no, there's not. I literally don't have anything. Well then, if that really is, if you genuinely don't even, don't have anything, at least you have Jesus and that's all you need. Um, so that's basically what I wanted to talk about today, guys. I know I got a little bit preachy and I know I got like a little bit like, you know, but this is something that makes me so I'm so passionate about this because it's like I really just like want to talk about this for like five years about how I would never want to just stay around somebody who complains it's so frustrating um so don't be that person and I'm not saying again you're never gonna make a mistake and you don't have to beat yourself up if you ever complain or you ever make a mistake because we're human beings okay it's just like anything we're all learning we're all growing but really make your heart posture just focused on jesus and so much joy will start to bloom out of you um but anyways i'm just gonna pray us out of this podcast because if you're new here that's what i usually do at the end of all my podcasts so yeah dear lord thank you so much for the person on the other side of the screen holy god you know exactly who they are and exactly where they are at in life right now if they've been waking up every morning just you know like gotta do the same old thing you know no 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 Lord, I pray that that would change now and that they would know that they can find joy in the fact that you have a plan for their life. And even if they don't really have anything or they can't find much joy in their everyday lives, that there is joy found in your name and that your purpose isn't for them to go around and waste every day speaking the words of the devil, but their purpose is to speak words of life. So I pray that they would start doing that now. Um, And I pray that they would just stay closely drawn to you and closely just your light bulb because lord your light bulb is full of love and joy and i pray that they would be a light bulb for the darkness of the world um lord you know exactly who the person on the other side of the screen is thank you that they are so loved by you and you have such a plan and such a purpose for their life thank you lord amen okay i love you guys so so much i hope you have a great rest of your monday or whatever day you're watching this i love you and i will see you for the next podcast goodbye